Good evening, I'm Tara Lynn Wagner and welcome to a special edition of Richard French Live, Sing Sing, Education Behind Bars. In the past decade, most federal and state funding for prison inmates has been slashed and as a result, correctional facilities nationwide have been forced to look outside their walls for educational assistance. Recently, RNN was granted exclusive access to New York's Sing Sing Correctional Facility, a maximum security prison located in Westchester County, just 35 miles north of Midtown Manhattan, to see how the men serving time there are being allowed to earn a college education. The program is funded by Hudson Link, a nonprofit organization that's committed to helping the inmates prepare for more constructive and meaningful lives, both during their incarceration and upon their release. Tonight, we're going to hear from the prison supervisor about the effect education is having upon the population at Sing Sing. We'll talk to the president of John Jay College about how society benefits from offering these men a chance to succeed. And most importantly, we'll hear from the inmates themselves about how they have personally been transformed. And later on, we want to hear from you. Do inmates deserve a college education? We'll be taking your calls and reading your emails. But first. Last month, I was given a tour of Sing Sing to see firsthand how the Hudson Link program is changing life for the men behind bars. After the Attica riots in the 1970s, Governor Nelson Rockefeller promised to give prisoners a chance for an education. Lawmakers agreed to fund college programs at all New York state prisons and kept that promise until the mid-90s, when Congress voted that convicted felons could no longer apply for Pell Grants for higher education. In 1995, Governor Pataki followed their lead, pulling all state funding for college programs in prisons, shutting the door on inmates looking to improve themselves and their chances. <laughs> Dr. Ann Reisner was volunteering at Sing Sing at the time. One of the men I remember saying to me, when the education money dried up, they knew that hope would be scarce in the prison, and that education equaled hope. Hope is hard to come by within the walls of the Sing Sing Correctional Facility. The maximum security prison is located in Ossining, 30 miles north of New York City, hence the phrase, up the river. Beyond the barbed wire fences and the barred windows, the brick buildings house roughly 1,700 men. In housing block A, they live in tiny cells with little to do. They're here for a reason, robbery, assault, murder, and they'll stay here in many cases for decades. Still, as superintendent, Brian Fisher strongly believes in the need for education. If you're just at the beginning and you know that you're going to be here for 30 more years, why even get that education? Because education frees them. Education gives them a chance to do other things even inside the prison. They'll get involved in things a little more intellectual than just going in the yard and, and, and pumping iron. Most people don't understand that. 99 percent of of all the inmates in New York State are going to come home at some point in their career. Everybody you see in jail in Sing Sing, sooner or later, will be on the street. Would you rather have them educated or not educated? Initially, it was the inmates themselves who struggled to bring education back to Sing Sing following the end of the state-supported program in 1995. By June of 2000, Hudson Link began privately funded classes, collaborating first with Nyack College and then with Mercy College to bring professors and teachers to the prison four days a week. Today they teach all the courses necessary for the men to earn a bachelor's degree in behavioral science. The classes are held in this schoolhouse overlooking the Hudson River. Here students learn everything from computer skills to logical thinking, while outside they can hear the sounds of their fellow inmates playing ball in the yard. They sacrifice rec time for school time. It's a choice none of them regrets. When I first came to prison, I played basketball all the time, but then I realized one day that it's not rehabilitating. You know, um, there are no scouts from Syracuse, Connecticut, Notre Dame coming here, so I needed to do something for myself. Douglas Duncan is serving 16 to 32 years for robbery. I love Othello. I've seen so much of myself in his story. This June, he'll graduate with an associate's degree. It's a big moment for me, but I think more so for my mother, just to see the look on her face when they call me to get my diploma. Because I had this one memory of her when I went to trial, and I had turned around to look at her, and I could see that she'd been up all night, like, crying, and that always stuck in my mind. So I, always, I made a promise to myself that day that the next time she cried over me, it'd be for good reasons, not for a bad reason. I just want to see her face that day when they give me the diploma. Really is for her and for my kids. You know, I want to give them a reason to be proud to say I'm their father. You know, I gave them enough reasons to hold their head down, 
by being, getting myself arrested, getting locked up. But I just want to give him one good reason to say that's my daddy. Rashawn Smalls was serving 25 to life for second degree murder in a maximum security prison 20 minutes from his home in Buffalo. He left his family behind and transferred to Sing Sing specifically for the opportunity to earn a college degree. At first they thought I was crazy, but this is something I felt deep in. I felt committed to, um, you know, for the first time in my life, having the opportunity to get a college degree and be the first child, my mother's first child to get a college degree. Is she going to be proud in two years when you get that degree? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, you know, part of, part of what I'm doing right now is for her. And uh, in a sense, because coming to prison, there's a lot of shame involved with being in prison, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, you know. Um, and for me, it is proven to her that my, uh, my, my, my life, her bearing me, it wasn't in vain. Rashawn lives in housing block seven, the honor block at Sing Sing. Cell doors are open during the day, allowing the inmates a bit more freedom. Several of the residents here are enrolled in Hudson Link, including Jose Jimenez, who's serving 25 years to life for second degree murder, and Rasan Johnson, who's serving 23 to 50 years for attempted robbery. He spends his time studying in his cell during the day and in the evening at the schoolhouse. Prior to Hudson Link, I can be compared to the caterpillar, you know, the young, the hairy, ugly little worm that just goes about. But when I came to Hudson Link, it provided me with the education and nourishment needed for transforming into a beautiful life-giving butterfly. Why do you think people on the outside should be concerned about you turning into a butterfly? Why should that be their problem? Well, they would have the caterpillar to deal with then. You know, if, if education is not in prison, then the caterpillars will go back out into society. You know, and then when they go back out into society, they, they bound to repeat the same behavior that they, they, they did to get them in here. Ultimately, Hudson Link affects far more than the men in the classroom. It rubs off on the other inmates they come in contact with inside these prison walls. The men that are in the program now, they're the men who are going to influence others in the prison system, that they become leaders for the good, not negative. Um, they become mentors to others. And if the funding were to disappear, as it did 10 years ago? You would see a lot of, especially the 75 inmates involved in the program today, would be very depressed and the inmates who are looking forward to going into education would be even more depressed. So there's a process going on. If you take the process away, you've got nothing but doing time, and that's the worst thing anybody can do, just, just do time. Of course, there are those who say that's the point. You do the crime, you do the time. Society doesn't owe you anything, least of all a free education. The men at Sing Sing believe they're living examples of why that attitude is wrong. And if they give me a second chance, I will take advantage of it. Especially for my children, my family, and for the whole society. I'm going to show them that the money that they're investing is going to be waste. So if more support is given and the program is expanded, you'll make it possible for brothers who are on the waiting list to come in, or you make it possible for more living examples to go back out there into the yards, for those people who can see that something has changed that man. So do you see yourself as a motivating force now within the community here? Yes, I, I do see myself as that. In fact, some of the older guys and some of the younger guys, they see me through the, throughout the corridors of the, uh, uh, the prison, and they say to me, hey, young scholar, you know, and I, it, it makes me feel real good that they're able to say that because they see something in me that they didn't see before. Now, a few weeks after I met these students, I returned to Sing Sing to attend their graduation. Coming up, we'll witness their family's emotional reaction. Plus, we'll hear from the head of the class. It's a powerful speech, and you won't want to miss it, so don't go away. Welcome back to RNN's special Sing Sing Education Behind Bars. Tonight we're bringing you an exclusive look behind the prison walls and into the classrooms of New York's Sing Sing Prison. Since Hudson Link began teaching inmates there, 77 undergraduate degrees have been awarded to the inmates, including 19 handed out earlier this month. RNN was once again granted exclusive access to attend the commencement ceremony. Among the graduates were Douglas Duncan and Jose Jimenez, who we met during our earlier visit. It was the moment they'd been waiting for. Family members stood and cheered as the 19 graduates approached the podium to receive their diplomas. Under their robes, they wore the green pants of a Sing Sing inmate, 
But on this night, they were just students eager to accept their degree. For Douglas Duncan, it was a moment of great pride. I've been waiting a long time for this day, you know, mostly for my mom, my family, you know. It's like my way of giving back for all the support they've given me through the years. During our previous conversation, Douglas spoke about a promise he made to himself at his trial, that the next time his mother cried over him, it would be for a good reason. Seeing Douglas in his cap and gown, that promise was fulfilled. My eyes are a little teary and these are tears of joy. When Douglas first came to Sing Sing, personally, I thought all hope for his life was gone. I, I could not, at that point in time, see where anything positive could ever come out of him being incarcerated. But Today, I feel that he has taken this negative situation and turned it into a positive victory. Sitting with his family, Jose Jimenez finds his name in the program, pointing out that he's graduating magna cum laude. His mother, Feliciana, may not speak English, but she understands the depth of her son's achievement. Bien feliz. She's very proud. Me siento orgullosa de mi hija. According to Superintendent Fisher, these students worked harder and sacrificed more to get their degrees than most people can imagine. And while the education was free, there's still a debt to be paid. You need to be the next generation of spokesmen for education. You need to show the way for others to follow. That is your debt to those who offered you the chance to succeed. As for the investment made in them, Mercy College President Louise Faro says it was wisely spent. People incarcerated are a group of people in our society who really need to turn their lives around. And I think that education is the way anybody turns their life around. While the college degree was a hard-won victory, one many of these men never thought they would experience, on this day, the real reward for Douglas and Jose was more than a piece of paper. It was their family's pride. And for me to get that degree today in front of her meant so much to me. Really deep down inside, oh, oh you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Uh, really meant so much to me for giving us something to hold on to, to see that I'm really taking steps toward trying to be a better man, a better son, and a better father, most of all. This is a great moment for me, me, my children, and my family.